Today I recently launched their newest model, GLM 4.7, so in this video I'm putting it head-to-head -head against Opus 4.5 and GPT 5.2 to see which one can build the best F1 dashboard. It's going to be a clean, one-turn build test. We'll give all models the same PRD in an isolated environment. There'll be no follow-ups and no human edits, so we're just going to test their ability to one-shot this dashboard. Then we'll ask Opus 4.5 and GPT 5.2 to review all three builds blind. And there's a really interesting takeaway in how each model judges quality. We'll see where each model clearly excels. Then I'll run every build in dev mode so you can see what actually works and the UI that each model builds. By the end, you'll know whether GLM 4.7 can hold its own and where each model shines. Before we look at the results, first let's have a look at the PRD and see exactly what prompt each model is getting. So quick context on the PRD. The product is called the F1 Command Center a web dashboard that turns historical and current F1 data into an immersive pit wall style experience. And it should work year round, even in the off season. The core ask is a multi-section dashboard with a next race countdown and full session schedule, plus standings with season selection and points progression, driver comparison, a circuit explorer and all time records. Data has to come from free sources, primarily the Joel Pika F1 API with weather as an optional enhancement. And there are clear non-goals, so we're leaving out live telemetry, no accounts, no fantasy, and no betting. So the models aren't just styling a page, they're integrating real data across decades, handling season selection from 1950 to now, and presenting it cleanly. I've used Opus 4.5 to create the PRD purely because it is clearly the best model at creating detailed PRDs, and we want the models to have as much information as possible as part of the prompt. Next, we'll break down the test setup and the rubric so you know exactly how each build is being judged. Okay, so here's an overview of the test setup. All three models got the exact same PRD and we ran every build through cursor chat so the tooling was identical. That's an important distinction because you would likely get different results from Opus 4.5, for example, if you used it with Claude Code. But we've used all three models with cursor chat so that the conditions were the same. Each model built its own separate repo, and that's the code base being judged. So I pushed all three repos individually to Git and allowed our models to blind review each repo without knowing which model built which. Now for the rubric, it's 100 points spread across a few buckets. Build and reproducibility, feature coverage, data correctness, resilience and caching, UX and design, accessibility and engineering quality. So the scoring isn't about visual taste. UX here means usability, information clarity, mobile fit, and accessibility. It's also whether the data is real, whether the season logic holds up, and whether the app can handle failure states, and whether the build is actually runnable. So the purpose of using our models here to blind review each repo is to remove any bias from the equations. We're asking the models based on a prompt to review the entire repo and give its feedback and score it based on the rubric. So that's going to remove any bias. We're also going to get some really interesting insights into how each model actually judges quality when they're looking at a build. So you'll see in the results that Opus and GPT 5.2 have some really unique ways that they approach this process. So that's going to be an interesting takeaway. Let's have a look at the results and see how all three builds actually scored. All right, let's have a look at the overall results. Before we dive into the specifics of why each model scored the way it did, We'll just have a look at the overall scores. So first we have GLM 4.7, which scored 85 on the Opus review and 47 on the GPT review for an average score of 66. Opus 4.5 scored 94 on the Opus review and 72 on the GPT review for an average of 83. And GPT 5.2 scored 94 on the Opus review and 88 on the GPT review for an average score of 91. Again, they were blind tests, so when Opus was reviewing these builds, it could only identify them as A, B, and C. It didn't know which model had built which one. Let's now jump over and have a look at the specifics of why each model scored the way it did. Another piece of context worth mentioning is tech stack choice. So in the PRD, we left that open-ended so the models could choose their preferred tech stack. All three builds used a modern React and TypeScript stack, so there's more similarity here than difference. GPT 5.2 built a Next.js app router application, which gives you server capabilities and makes validation and data boundaries easier to enforce. Opus 4.5 built a Vite based client only React app, which is faster to scaffold and tends to favor UI speed and visual polish. GLM 4.7 also chose a Next.js style setup, but it had more issues in wiring and runtime stability. 
None of these choices are right or wrong. They just come with different trade-offs. What mattered for the scores wasn't the stack itself, but how well each build handled data and edge cases within that setup. But I just wanted to share that information so that you know what tech stack choices each model made and the fact that it was open-ended. They were able to choose whatever tech stack they wanted to use. Right here we can see the specific feedback that each model gave when it reviewed the repos. Let's start with GLM 4.7. Opus rewarded what it saw as real architectural intent, a three-tier fallback hierarchy, broad route coverage, so it had home, standings, calendar, drivers, etc., and a modular Next.js structure that looked production-oriented. GBT, on the other hand, crushed it for trust issues, a runtime-breaking bug in the circuit detail route, incorrect API assumptions, the on-this-day data handling and fallback snapshot data presented as authoritative without validation. Next, we had... Opus 4.5, Opus praised information clarity and navigation structure, the near complete feature coverage, a clean fallback abstraction and a strong championship progression chart. GPT on the other hand penalised it for data integrity violations, for example it used math random to plot the season standings rather than specific real results. It simulated intermediate race data and presented that as real, it hard coded all time records and the fallback status was not reflected correctly in the UI state. So GPT 5.2 took some points off for that. And finally, we have the GPT 5.2 build. Both reviewers agreed it was strong. Championship progression computed from real per round standings. A proper internal API gateway for fallback logic. Correct season propagation and internally consistent snapshot data. The remaining deductions were smaller. Lint issues, conservative visuals, a node version mismatch and error states that render as no data, so pretty minor issues, and that's a look at why each model scored the way it did, with GPT 5.2 coming out on top. One more layer that matters here is reviewer behavior. Even with the same rubric and the exact same prompt, the model's judged differently. Opus tends to reward architectural completeness and overall structure. It treats most issues as fixable and scores like a senior design review. GPT 5.2, on the other hand, is far stricter on data integrity and release blockers. If the data is questionable or the build is unstable, it penalizes hard, almost like a production gate. So when you see the score gaps, it's not random, it's two different review philosophies. The takeaway here is that you should use Opus when you want to sanity check scope and structure, and use GPT when you need a strict correctness gate before you ship. So there's potentially a place to use both models in your workflow, depending on what you want to test. Next, let's have a quick look at build times and costs. Okay, so quick context on build time and cost. Build time here is just observational metadata, not part of the scoring. And faster doesn't necessarily mean better. It's just an interesting data point to consider. In this run, GPT 5.2 finished in 23 minutes and 20 seconds. Opus 4.5 in 25 minutes and 7 seconds. And GLM 4.7 took 50 minutes and 14 seconds. I didn't track exact token usage, so cost is theoretical based on published pricing. I am working on an API harness though, which will test models on benchmark tasks and track exact token usage and cost. So keep an eye out for that video, which I'll be publishing soon. From a raw token perspective, GLM 4.7 is by far the cheapest. GPT 5.2 has moderate input cost, but pricey output. And Opus 4.5 is the most expensive on output. So the practical takeaway is cost-aware composition. Use cheaper models for repeatable background work. GPT 5.2 for correctness critical logic. And Opus for structure and presentation when it adds real value. Next, let's run all three builds in dev mode and have a look at the dashboards in action. So starting out, let's have a look at GLM 4.7. At first glance, the UI is actually pretty solid. It's got a clean layout, sensible navigation, and season switching works correctly across pages. I'll flick over just to show you now. We'll go to 2024. That looks correct. We'll flick back to 2025 where we can see Lando Norris as the winner. Standings update properly, so that is non-trivial logic that it has nailed. Where it falls down is in depth and stability. So you can see if we go over to calendar, this doesn't surface completed race results. Circuit pages aren't season aware, and the records page it's a runtime error. If we flick over there, we can see we hit the error there. So the takeaway here is GLM 4.7 can scaffold a decent UI and basic season logic, but you need to validate data trust and runtime paths before shipping anything serious. But if you want to do iterations and smaller tasks, 
it looks like it might be a decent option for some of those UI or basic build tasks. Next up is Opus 4.5, and this is where UI polish and product thinking really show. Navigation is clear, features are broadly implemented, and the circuit and driver detail views are genuinely well designed. If we scroll down, we can see we're on season 2024. The driver standings here with Max Verstappen on top, so the data is correct, and the UI layout is really nice and clean. We've got more information on the side here as well with F1 history, recent results. We've also got the constructor standings here as well. If we scroll down, we also see the championship battle graph here, and this is where GPT 5.2 penalized Opus in its review. The championship progression chart uses randomized data between known endpoints, so we get the correct result at the end, but rather than an actual progression that matches results, it's just randomized this to then get to that endpoint. And as mentioned, that's what it got penalized for in GPT 5.2's review. So visually and structurally, this is probably the strongest build, but parts of the data are presented as real when they're not. And that's why it got penalized on the review from GPT 5.2. And as a result, got a lower score than the GPT 5.2 build, which we'll jump over and have a look at now. And finally, we have GPT 5.2. The UI here is more conservative. There's less visual flair than Opus, but the underlying logic is very strong. Standings, calendar results, and season propagation are all computed from real data rather than having anything simulated. The trade-off, I guess, is presentation. It's not as visually rich as the other two versions, but it is the most trustworthy implementation in terms of data integrity. So that's a look at all three builds in dev mode. Let's now have a look at the key takeaways, what we can learn from this test and apply to our own workflows. So in summary, the main takeaway isn't that one model is objectively better than the others. What this test really shows is that different models optimize for different definitions of quality. GBT 5.2 prioritizes correctness, data integrity, and release safety. Opus optimizes for structure, completeness, and product experience. GLM focuses on speed and breadth, sometimes at the expense of depth. And that's why I don't think the right answer here is to crown a single winner, is to think of it in terms of workflow composition. One important clarification as well before wrapping up is that everything you've seen in this video is based on a single agent cursor environment using one-shot builds with no follow-ups. So this doesn't mean, for example, that Opus is bad at backend work or not as good as GPT 5.2. In a different setup, such as Claude Code with iterative prompting, task decomposition, or a longer refinement loop, the model can behave very differently. So this isn't a hard and fast rule on which model is best for certain tasks. It's more of a snapshot of how each model behaves under the same constrained workflow, in this case within Cursor Chat. So for example, if you are a Cursor user, these takeaways are going to be a lot more relevant to you because this is a clear example of how these models perform within that environment. If you've got ideas for other tests or workflows you want to see benchmarked, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.